<clears throat> well, it would it would be an understatement to say. Is this you can hear me yet? To say how honored I am to have these characters, Alex and Dottie, Tim, uh, amongst my friends, poets I admire tremendously, and to be here reading tonight. And thank you. I see friends. I see colleagues. I see students. I see former students. Uh, and. Uh, and I'm, I'm very, very, I'm very, very happy to have you all here. I'm just going to read three poems from the book. I can't see you. It's very strange, right? I mean, it's, there you are. I can see you. I was going to read the title poem of the book, but uh, I had some requests, which I'm happy to fulfill. So I'll, I'll, I'll start with this, this little poem called Letter, which I might have called Email, but you're right that I don't start, <laughs> and nor do I end in that space. Letter. Tonight... As you walk out into the stars, or the forest, or the city, look up as you must have looked before love came, before love went, before ash was ash. Look at them, the city's mists, the winters, and the moon's glass you must have held once in beginning, that new moon you must have touched once in the waters, saying, change me, change me, change me. All I want is to be more of what I am. You, Y-O-U. I live deep in the valley that made us, and I know it's ghosts. Last night, riddled with spirits, I climbed up to a roadhouse in the foothills where the locals know a life is just a story. Tito, the bartender, his hands salted with remorse, speaking as always of his home in Juarez. In style, he says, you have to tell it with style. And he does, almost his belly shaking with the weight of whiskey and ghosts. They say each night he dreams of his father kneeling among his days like a herd of Indian ponies passing him by, loaded with good bread and uso. He broke them, his father did, with old rugs over their withers when the world was young. Did he survive, we ask? when he points to the place in his belly where the bullet passed like praise, quick, through the quick of his father's life. He nods and lets the radio bleat abandoned love. Love, sometimes I think I am afraid of the immensities of the night, the dark that cannot hear how we fall through one another like water and the flesh that can. I left that bar, and one day, yes, I will leave this place too. Old albums in the shallows, the sun that lights out over the foothills like a preacher from an unsaved city. Once, Tito told me, a life can begin with once, and perhaps it can. Once, driving west to the Pacific, I slept out in the old Chevy, to hear the canyons. Coyotes howled in the saguaros, closing in on the hairs hidden in the weeds, the river where I'd let my gold ring settle. I had wanted all that mad year to say one clear thing to the dead, one clear thing to the living. I never did. Style, yes, style is what you have when you have nothing left. And I remember how empty it was, the voice I heard in that place, nothing but wind and America singing. How I slipped the car into gear and drove all night to the ocean and lay down on the waves that rinsed me of the journey. I was young once. I wanted a world other than this one. Now I look up into the starlight and see fires that will not come again, love. The body's story that cannot be revisited. Your absence clamors out of me from the crossing, like horses through the thorn along some shore. 
Odysseus. Think of the moment before the moment, before recognition, before the nurse saw the boar's scar coursing down his thigh where the world had first entered him in the forests of childhood, before Penelope, before his battle for her heart. Think of his moment alone on the shore, his sailors running up to the village where girls stood wringing spices from their hair. Think of the gods saying to him, you do not have to praise ruin anymore. You do not have to praise what is lost. How you imagine him is how you enter things. He is kneeling or he is weeping or he is turning toward the sea again, thinking of the great deeds of the hopeless. Think of him lifting the sands and touching them to his tongue to see if it is real, if it is home, if it is time. Think of the moment before he knew he had stepped out of the myths and into his life. Whether that means to you that he would sing or mourn or be lessened, and his patience when he rose up again and took himself the long way toward his kingdom, not knowing if it had all changed, or if love had lasted, or if anything can last. Think of him as though he were your life, as though you had sat waiting at a loom for long, dark years, weaving and unweaving what you are. Think of your life returning to you with eyes that had seen death. And whether you would look away if you saw him pausing a moment among the gardens and the horses, listening to the song of each thing, the common things he had forgotten. Think of him hearing your voice again, hiding his face in his hands as he listened, hearing a music of losses and joys pestilence and bounty, a beauty that had prepared a place for him, and whether you would have him be changed by that, or return to what he was, or become what he had come this way to become.